Presets is an essential feature in any RAW editor to allow for a faster workflow when you have a boatload of photos to edit. However, if you're a beginner, you might not be aware of all of the features of DxO Photo Lab 8's presets. Not your fault, as it's not really elaborated sufficiently in the manual. If that's an issue though, not to worry. In this video, I'll be running through the basics of presets to help beginners get the most out of DxO Photo Lab 8. But before we go through the demonstration, let's run through a quick overview of what a preset is. A preset is a set of corrections that you can apply in one go to any pictures in DxO Photo Lab. The goal of the presets is to help you record and keep track of your favorite corrections and to ease and accelerate your workflow. There are two kinds of presets in DxO Photo Lab. Full presets cover all the existing corrections available in the Customize tab, meaning that each correction has a status of either activated or deactivated with every setting defined. Partial presets, on the other hand, cover only a limited number of corrections among all existing corrections, with the status of some corrections remaining undefined. The difference between these types I'll elaborate later in the video. But for now, let's do a demonstration on the basics of presets. So here we are in DxO Photo Lab 8, where I've gone ahead and opened an image. We come to the first unique feature of DxO Photo Lab, and that is Photo Lab will automatically apply a default preset once an image is opened. As far as I know, other raw editors don't do this step. In Photo Lab 8, that default preset is called DxO Style Natural, which is a slight update from DxO Style Standard used in versions prior to Photo Lab 8. You can confirm that the preset is applied by viewing the History panel. So you might ask what settings have been modified by the preset? What has it done? Well, surprisingly, quite a lot. As you can see, it has enabled smart lighting to balance the tones. By the way, if you want to know more about smart lighting, do check out my video in the description. It has also reduced the highlights, increased midtones and shadows, applied a clear view haze reduction, corrected for vignetting, applied high quality denoising, corrected for lens softness, chromatic aberration, and fixed lens distortion. That's a lot of corrections out of the box. In case you're wondering, this is what the image would look like with no corrections applied. And here is what the image looks like with a natural preset applied. As you can see, it's a big difference. In case though that you want to have an alternative default preset other than natural, you can make that change in preferences. Next, let's move on to the built-in presets. As you would expect, DxO comes with a lot and even more if Film Pack is installed. Some notable presets, aside from natural, include the no correction preset which allows you to work with the image from scratch, the optical corrections only preset, which excludes all corrections except optical corrections, such as denoising, distortion and lens softness correction, etc. HDR backlight correction, which as I've shown in another video, is great for fixing harsh shadows caused by difficult backlight. The portrait high key, which is great for brightening up a portrait and giving a positive mood for the image. Polarized postcard, which helps make a landscape's colors pop. Of course, there are others. Do try all of them out for yourself and see which works best for you. Next, let's move on to applying a preset. As you might have observed, you can apply a preset by selecting from the gallery, which is opened via clicking the preset button. An alternative workflow would be to right click on the thumbnail Choose Apply Preset and select the preset from the list. Next, let's move on to creating our own presets. So far, we've been using built-in presets. This time, let's learn how to create our own. The easiest way is to create one from an existing adjustment. To demonstrate the steps, first, I'll perform some adjustments. Curve, Haze, and micro contrast 
Next, I'll right click on the thumbnail. From the context menu, I'll choose New Preset from Image Settings. As you can see, the EXO will save the new preset in a default presets folder. However, for better organization, I'll create a subfolder named My Presets. I'll call the preset Add Contrast. Notice that the preset is just a text file with a dot preset extension. There, the preset is created. As you can see, it now appears in the gallery. Next, let's take a look at the difference between full and partial presets, which we touched on at the start of the video. For your information, all the presets we've used so far is of the full preset variety. What this means is every setting in a full preset is defined. Applying the preset will overwrite any and all existing adjustments in the image. The main problem with this is sometimes you just want a preset to overwrite only some of the settings, not all. To demonstrate the problem, let's create a preset which will add a vignette and bokeh to an image. I'll add the vignette and the blur. Next, I'll create preset from the adjustment, which I'll name as vignette. There, the preset has been created. Next, let's apply the preset to another image. But before I do so, let's say I prefer the image to be black and white. I'll apply the black and white subdued preset to the image. As you can see, applying the preset has changed the rendering setting to a value named neutral black and white, which is the setting which turns the image black and white. There, that's looking good. Let's apply our vignette to bring attention to the subject. As you can see, we get an undesired result. While the vignette was correctly applied, the previous rendering setting, neutral black and white, was overwritten, and that's because, as we mentioned, the behavior of the full preset is to overwrite everything. So now that we know the issue, what is the solution? And that brings us to the next type of preset, partial preset. In a partial preset, settings may be undefined or defined, where undefined settings are not applied while defined settings are applied. How do we create a partial preset? The best way to create a partial preset is by creating a new empty preset. To create a new empty preset, I'll first need to open, if it is not already opened, a palette called the Preset Editor. I'll click Palettes. I'll select the Preset Editor. There, the Preset Editor now appears. By the way, if you want the Presets Editor to remain available, simply drag it to the panel to dock it. Next, I'll select the folder in which to create the empty preset. I'll right-click on an empty spot within the Preset Editor. As you can see, that brings up the context menu. I'll choose New Empty Preset. I'll call the new preset Vignette Partial. With Vignette Partial selected, I'll click Edit. That brings up corresponding checkboxes for each of the settings. As you can see, all the checkboxes are unselected, and all unselected checkboxes signify that the setting is undefined. Next, I'll adjust the settings for vignetting and blur. I'll select the corresponding checkboxes to make both of these settings defined. I'll save the preset by clicking the Save button. I'll click Edit to get out of editing mode. There, the preset is finished. Let's test it. I'll apply the preset. As you can see, this time, only the vignette and blur setting is applied while the rest of the settings, including the black and white adjustment, remain correctly unaffected. Let's look at another example. This time, let's create two partial presets, one for increasing contrast and another for boosting color. I'll call the preset Add Contrast Partial. I'll make the adjustments to curves, 
clear view and micro contrast. I'll define each of the settings by clicking on the checkbox. I'll save the preset by clicking the save button. Next, let's create a preset just to boost color. I'll again create the empty preset. I'll name it Boost Color Partial. I'll make the HSL adjustments to make the colors pop. By the way, for this preset, I did encounter an error where the preset, for whatever reason, was not being saved correctly. In such a case, I found what worked was clicking the Apply button before saving. Not sure why this bug is occurring. There, the presets have been created. Let's apply it. I'll apply the Boost Colors Partial preset first. Next, I'll apply the Add Contrast Partial preset. As you can see, despite applying Add Contrast last, it did not affect the previous HSL adjustments from the Boost Colors preset, demonstrating that you can stack partial presets in any order and it won't affect each other, which is what we want. So I hope you found this video helpful. As you have seen, presets is very well implemented in Photolab and gives you a lot of flexibility it's a real strength. Let me know if there are any questions or did I miss anything about presets? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.